I'm bored. Road trip. Hi folks. After a long hiatus, I've decided to make some ham radio videos again, but this time it's going to be related to a trip that I'm taking where I brought all my ham radio stuff. Well, almost all of it. Welcome to Alamogordo, New Mexico, home of White Sands Missile Base and also home of the Trinity site, which is where the first atomic bomb was ever exploded. Last but not least, it's also home to the kitschy White Sands Motel, a 1960s throwback to the Route 66 days, as is the entire town, really. So, let's talk about some cool stuff. Okay, first, I've got to give you a tour of this hotel. Or, I'm sorry, this is not a hotel. This is a motel, as in motor hotel. So, back in the 50s and 60s, people would take road trips instead of hopping on an airplane or getting in their RV or anything like that. They'd go on a road trip. Sorry if you hear a whole bunch of wind. It's pretty windy here in southern New Mexico. And then we go to hotels like the White Sands Motel, and this place looks like it has not changed since about 1957, which is really awesome. Uh, except for one thing, no smoking indoors, but apparently you can smoke outdoors, not that you would want to. But here we are at room 17, and this, this is just, this is amazing. This is amazing. There's all my crap. Sorry about that. Okay, sure. Modern television. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, wow. This is just... This is just as kitschy as it gets. I mean, look at this. There's my air conditioner. It took like five hours to cool down the room last night because when I walked in, it was 105 degrees outside. And I cranked that thing all the way up. I mean... You can't do better than that shower curtain. I mean, really, that's awesome. And you know how room keys are with hotels these days, right? I mean, you get this little key card. Nah, -uh, not here. This, it's old school. So I got here yesterday and um, just kind of settled in, watched a little TV, ate a pizza. I mean, I ate a pizza. It was only a medium, but still. And. Uh, so I didn't really have uh, uh, much time or motivation uh, to set everything up, and uh, I still have it. You know what? Let's, uh, let's just be casual about this here. Come on. Let me show you what I brought. Okay, I am... <clears throat> excuse me. I am so excited about this stuff. All right, so... Um, clothes. Yeah, duh, of course I brought clothes. All right, uh, radio stuff. So... This is, I got my backup emergency radio in there. We're not gonna look at that, that's boring. It's a little bail thing. Um, I brought, if you've watched my previous videos, you know this bad boy right here. Brought this. And I actually had this set up on the um, passenger seat next to me uh, while I was driving along I-10. I came from Central Texas and drove all the way to Alamogordo, which is southern New Mexico, so it's it's about an hour north of El Paso. So take a look at the map, you can see. I had a really long drive, but um, I, I definitely made some contacts. Most of them were in and around El Paso, though, and of course here in the Alamogordo Cloudcroft area. And the reason for that is there's no one in, in West Texas. No, seriously, no one lives there. It's, it's, a, it's a desert. On from that, I've recently gotten into APRS. And so I set up um, an APRS deal in the car, basically with this radio. Uh, and, what it, and ignore this for the moment. So I had a regular antenna. In fact, I had uh, this Abri antenna on it. This is a good antenna, actually. It's, uh, it's cheap and effective, and it bends, so I can store it easily in my backpack. So anyway, I had that thing on there, and a special cable that you can get from, I forget if I got it, uh, if it was manufactured by Beofeng or uh, Avery. I don't know, all that stuff comes out of the same factory in China anyway, I'm convinced. So anyway, uh, I set that up, and I also have a little uh, Android phone that I got, like a $25 Android phone. I normally use an iPhone for my actual phone. So I got a little Android phone, and put the APRS app on it uh, to use and uh, it works great at home but something very interesting happened 
Uh, while I was out there and I had an auto reporting using the smart reporting feature in the APRS app on uh, uh, on the Android phone is this phone got seriously worked and very overheated and the display was starting to fade out I mean it's fine now it just it just got really overheated Frequency mode. so see you could oh wow I just noticed something check it out that's the wrong call sign. That's my old original call sign when I got licensed. I've since gotten a vanity one. Anyway, I need to change that. So, um, and uh, to boot, there were really no APRS nodes, you know, or uh, gateways or anything like that out there. So, uh, not only did I stress my radio for no reason, uh, I didn't, you know, none of my pings showed up on APRS.fi. So, that was no good. All right, so there's that. And I brought the bag that that goes in and brought another bag which has got that and a couple other HTs in it. And this is a cool little thing I made a long time ago. I never made a video about it. So I made this. I went to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and just got some PVC and made this little tube which... Uh, I cannot open with one hand. Stand by. Ding! Yay! There we go. Okay. And in that tube, there we go, I've got my, uh, well, it won't focus, but it's the Nagoya NA771. Not a fake one. It's the real one, and it works really well, and it's great. And uh, th this was the first non-factory antenna I ever bought. Uh, a bazillion years ago for my uh, HT, my first ham radio, and I made this to protect it, and it has worked extremely well. So you can see it's still in great shape. By the way, if you hear something that sounds like thunder, this kitchen motel does what they did back in the day. These may be from the 50s or 60s. That's, that's metal right there. No wooden... Uh, bed foundations here. Uh-uh. Heck no. So anyway, I, I I got that. That was all cool. Got a bunch of, let's see. Yeah, let me do a review on this, on some of these other things. Like I got this uh, car charger thing. So there's not actually a battery in there. This, this simply delivers, what is it? 7.4 volts, I think. Yeah, 7.4 volts which is what the Baofeng HT needs in order to operate and works fine, actually. That's, that's really good. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, pieces and parts. Uh, charger. You know, all the usual stuff. Oh, and every programming cable I own uh, and, and the uh, regular battery because I've got the extended battery on HT right now and earphones and I always believe you know if you think you're gonna need it pack it better to have it not need it than need it and not have it right right absolutely also I made a very exciting purchase well it was exciting for me anyway and uh, uh, we have to go outside to the car to see it um, oh I'm definitely gonna need sunglasses stand by we're going to take a look at something in the trunk. And here we go. All right. Oh, yeah, that's my sir. I purchased a diamond whoop, NR770 uh, HNMO. The NMO just says what kind of uh, connection it is. And I, hang on, let me make sure I have the key in my pocket. Yep, I'm not about to lock myself up. And a mount to go with it. This is the uh, diamond. Oh, can you see that? I, I'm looking at the screen. I'm not sure if you can see it. Super Gainer K400. And this basically just attaches here. It just screws on. And ladies and gentlemen, this is my very first oh forget it anyway it goes there use your imagination 
this is my very first um, mobile antenna to go on a car and wow does it work really really great uh, I mean compared to an HT inside a car I suppose you know uh, 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 you know a 5 8 wave piece of aluminum on the outside of the car is gonna work better than an antenna on the inside of the car but man I could I could like I could hit like Jupiter with this thing I mean it's it's amazing it's really cool and super easy to run the wire uh, well at least in this car you can uh, just uh, I mean there's there's a gap behind the uh, So it's real easy to pop this seat down and just run the cable out of it and just run that up to the front. And there it is. And there's a jacket I brought because I'm stupid. It's 105 degrees out here. A couple other things. Uh, one is I brought this 450 watt inverter and uh, it just plugs in to power outlet in the car and will produce uh, 400, up to 450 watts, I think it's 450 continuous, no 400 continuous, 450 uh, peak for up to 15 minutes. And by the way, this is, this make and model has long since been discontinued, but uh, there's, there's a newer one out there that I'm sure is just as good, but this thing is, this thing works great. Um, and that's what I use to plug my big orange box into, uh, to keep it power, to keep the battery in their power. Now I've got a, a 12 amp hour, 12 volt battery inside my big orange box, but I was on the road for like eight or nine hours. I mean, a really long time. So it's, uh, it was going to run out. Uh, the battery was going to go dead, but it, I, I never even used the battery because I had that thing. Also, something else I want to talk about, I'll make a different video about this, is this little sucker that I that I made. Whoa. All right, so that's everything I brought. I'm gonna bring this in so I can make the next video. And uh, let's uh, let's retire back into room 17 in our casual early 60s motor hotel. Cocktails around the pool at five? Not really. This place doesn't even have a pool. <laughs>